John Straub here, and today I'm going to talk about vapor permeance testing, uh, kind of a common thing that always comes up in building science conversations and material selection and enclosure design. So the first thing to realize when we're talking about vapor permeance is what vapor permeance means. Water vapor in the air can transport through materials and assemblies in a number of ways. One of those ways is diffusion. This is what vapor permeance testing like ASTM E96, the most common type in North America for building materials, is focused on. So water vapor diffusion is, occurs when there's more water vapor on one side of a layer of material or an assembly than on the other. And the process by which water vapor moves, individual water vapor molecules move through that test specimen is called diffusion. When we are talking about the characteristics of a layer or a full assembly, then we describe the amount of water vapor by the term permeance. It's the rate of which water vapor is moving divided by the area and the driving potential. The vapor permeability label is applied to materials only, and materials have a characteristic of how well they'll allow water vapor to pass through them. And so the permeance is then adjusted to remove the thickness of the material. So it's always for a unit thickness, whether that be an inch, a foot, or a meter, depending on the different units that we use. So that's the big part of confusion is understanding vapor permeance versus permeability. And certainly when people use the very inaccurate and misleading term breathability to describe a material's vapor permeance, they imply that there might be some air movement going on, which there never is. So let's look at how we would set up a vapor permeance test in RDH building science labs or any other lab that would be used to do this kind of testing. So if one were interested in doing an ASTM E96 vapor permeance test, you would start with a controlled environment of normally 23 degrees Celsius and 50% relative humidity. There are other conditions you can choose, but that is by far the normal choice used for building related tests. Then we have the specimen itself, normally cut into a square or a circular disc, and that would be shown right here in this drawing. And then we have a cup. We affix the specimen to this vapor tight cup, and we fill the cup with this example with water, and water will be expected to move through the specimen from more water vapor, because just above this water, we expect it to be close to 100% humidity, into this 50% relative humidity condition. And notice there are no, there's no temperature difference. We try really hard to eliminate any temperature difference. We are just measuring the time rate of water vapor flow through this specimen. We measure the weight of the entire specimen and cup and water from time to time under the assumption that any change in mass or change in weight uh, is caused by water vapor diffusion with water vapor leaving this specimen. So that's a basic starting point. So what do the actual physical specimens look like? Well, when we're doing testing, they'll look something more along the lines of this. So here is a plastic, we can call it a cup. Um, this one is made with a deep lip so that we can put relatively thick layers of insulation into it. And RDH gets these made uh, custom for our purposes. This is an example of a sealed up and ready to be run vapor permeance test on a water resistive barrier, which happens to be Delta Ventas A. And we can see the seal being installed over top of the opening. These are aluminum tape seals. Um, we also use uh, hot wax, uh, various other types of vapor tight sealing mechanisms. And in the bottom, 
We would have uh, water in some cases and uh, or desiccates in others. And when we have water in that, we don't want to be able to, we don't want the water to slosh around. And so we put in these grids, um, which are anti-slosh grids that you insert in here so that when you lift the entire cup and specimen to put it on a scale and weigh it, uh, you don't have water splashing. So these are what the cups actually look like. And now we'll talk about where those cups are inserted to get them into the environment that's 23 degrees and 50% relative humidity. So let's go into the climate chamber that we uh, use. So the important part about this particular room is that it is controlled at a very steady temperature and humidity. Uh, we actually have conditioning equipment here that does humidification, dehumidification, cooling through this uh, thin tube unit, heating through the electric heater, um, and there's even uh, a few other little features that we used. Let's take a look at some of these different cups inside the constant climate room at REH Building Science Labs. Here you can see that we have made cups out of uh, circular pipes. Uh, that are made of heavy plastic, P uh, PVC plastic, sealed with uh, a special kind of wax that's known to be vapor tight. And uh, you see the aluminum tape around the edge, and then you can measure the area uh, precisely that water vapor is moving through. Uh, these are right here, this is what's called a blank. So this is a standard test setup, except that what's being tested is, is actually in a sheet of aluminum, which we know has zero vapor permeance. And that's used to make sure that when we're testing, we should get an answer of zero for that one, along with some other tests. And that gives us confidence that our me measurements are being done correctly and our scale is not drifting. I showed some test examples like this, where you can see a little bit of water in the bottom. That's uh, called the wet cup test. Uh, we also routinely would do a dry cup test. And what's in the bottom of these is a desiccant, a material that has been baked so totally dry that water vapor goes from the 50% environment through the sample into the desiccant. So it's sort of the opposite of the wet cup test here where water vapor is leaving the water passing through this granite and then leaving to the, into the 50% RH here. So those are sort of common uh, test setups and coded samples. You have to also do the correct orientation of the setup. So all of those uh, types of details are something that a test lab needs to get good at through experience. But realistically, the concept is quite simple. So now that you've got all of this background about how one does ASTM E96 and most other vapor permeance tests, what do you do with that information? Well, the first thing is make sure when someone quotes a vapor permeance number that you understand the units and you understand that it's a permeance and not a permeability so that you can compare apples to apples. The other thing is to basically think about what range of vapor permeance you want and or need in your wall design or your roof design or your basement design. So many years ago, Joe Stiebrick defined a number of vapor permeance classes, which range from vapor permeance numbers of zero to 0 0.1 US perms or zero to about six metric nanograms or perms. Class two was from 0.1 US perms to one US perms. And class three was one to 10 and over 10 perms or over 570 metric perms was vapor open. So when you're designing a system where you want a vapor barrier, much like you might want in a swimming pool, well, then you're probably looking at around the 0.1 perm or even 0.2 perms or less in US terms. If, however, you're looking for a water resistive barrier to put outboard of insulation in a cold climate, well, then you want something that's quite vapor permeable to allow water vapor to leave the system. So then you want something that's well over 10 perms, 
maybe 15 to 25 would be really nice to have. And that would be in metric uh, equivalents, well over a thousand nanograms per Pascal second meters per square squared for the 15 nanogram target sort of range for something that's vapor open. In wall assemblies, we're often able to have a moderate vapor permeance. If you don't have a smart vapor retarder, you might want something that is one, two, or even three perms US, uh, depending on what the interior environment is, the exterior environment, and the rest of the wall assembly. But at least now you should be able to understand what that vapor permeance value means, the difference between wet cup and dry cup, and why you would be wanting to ask that they have permeance listed, not just permeability of a material.